Ça, c'est à Campin. Question 3, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, may I have your permission to answer all the parliamentary questions related to the recent incidents of cheating by trainee lawyers during the 2020 bar exams together? That would include questions three, four, five in the order paper from Mr. Sia, Ms. He, Ms. Haniso, as well as a written PQ number 11 from Mr. Ang Wei Nung for today's sitting. Please proceed. Thank you, sir. So the Singapore Institute of Legal Education, SILE, conducts the bar exams in Singapore. And SILE has said that it has put in place additional safeguards to prevent cheating. Um, it has introduced remote proctoring for exams that are conducted online. And uh, SILE's position is that apart from the 11 cases which have been uncovered, they have not found any other cases of cheating uh, in the subsequent rounds of the bar exams. But of course, the fact that you know, there is a difference between whether it has happened and what they have found, but they haven't found anything else. As regards uh, these particular trainee lawyers, SILE has required that all of them who cheated are required to repeat the preparatory course and or the bar exams in the next year. Uh, the Attorney General has objected to their applications for admission uh, because of the cheating during the bar exams. And the court has adjourned their hearings for admission. So what does that mean? It means that the applications to be admitted to the bar will be heard at some time in the future when the adjournments end. And to get admitted, they will need to convince all the stakeholders involved that they are fit and proper to practice law before they are allowed to do so. And as with all admission applications, the High Court has the discretion to rule on uh, whether a particular applicant should be admitted or should not be admitted, taking into account the views of the Attorney General, SILE, and the Law Society. Now, I think uh, we need to be careful about how much we discuss here and I have to be careful about what I say because the applications of the trainee lawyers who cheated are still pending in court. Uh, so in the circumstances, what I can say is this, lawyers are fiduciaries. They are expected to act in the best interests of the client they advise. They are also officers of the court, meaning they owe a very high duty to the court. And they have to be honest both with their clients and with the court. And they have to act with the highest standards of probity to ensure that they can be relied upon uh, with utmost confidence. And that's not just as uh, lawyers advising clients, but in every other aspect of their conduct. Uh, cheating is a serious derogation from the basic principle of honesty. And I think all this can be said without too much contention. And there are levels of seriousness when lawyers behave dishonestly. Misleading clients is serious. Lying in court is serious. Lying on oath is serious. And some of these carry potential criminal consequences. There's also other conduct which, uh, if it's unbefitting of a lawyer, whether or not in the context of advising a client, can also be taken up. So these are basic principles. I'm sure members, including the members who have asked the questions, would accept that any such conduct is quite unacceptable. What happens to the particular trainee lawyer's applications, how they will be dealt with, uh, the courts will decide, taking into account the views of the respective institutions uh, which will put forward their views. Thank you, sir. Cecilia Kempe. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I have... Uh, <clears throat> Three supplementary questions for the minister. You can keep to two questions. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, first one is 
um, Minister mentioned that the SILE had put in these additional uh, additional safeguards since. My question is, you know, some of these safeguards, um, of course, we could say we are, we are smarter on hindsight, but some of these safeguards, why would they not put into it in the first instance? And if there were subsequent uh, cases where some of the previous trainees in previous exams, which is my question, earlier question, uh, if they have been subsequently been practicing, uh, I wanted to ask Minister whether the law SOC has found any misconduct amongst, uh, amongst any of that group. These are the earlier cases, if there were any of similar cases that cheated in the past. My second supplementary question is that earlier on we talked about, uh, we were concerned about second chances. Given that the names of these candidates are now reviewed, what can we say about giving them second chances? Thank you. Mr. Sia's first question is that why did SILU not put in the safeguards earlier? So I cannot speak for SILU. Uh, I assume that uh, they perhaps expected lawyers to be more honest than uh, has turned out to be the case, at least with regard to some of them. And uh, prior to COVID, uh, exams were usually conducted physically. So I don't think SILE has that much experience uh, doing this, uh, conducting it in this format. Second, as regards whether there are earlier cases, so what I can say is SILE says that they have not found uh, situations of such cheating. And I drew a distinction between that and uh, whether something like that has actually happened. Um, this is the second supplementary question, Minister, about second chances, if you want to respond or not. My apologies. Uh, on whether it should be a question of second chance, I think the way we ought to approach it is this. The first point should be, uh, what is the offence and who uh, committed the offence? The offence here is cheating, which is serious. Who committed it? Trainee lawyers, that's also serious. Doubly serious. And uh, so you start with that, and the message has got to go out to others that all of this will be dealt with very seriously. I don't think anyone can uh, dispute that. Second, at the same time, uh, what is the right penalty? As I said, that's before the court, so we need to be careful, but I think you can say this much. These are young people. Does that mean that you forever prevent them from practicing? I think most people will say that would sound very harsh. So what's the appropriate penalty? Taking into account the seriousness of the offense, but also their age, and uh, should they forever be prevented from being lawyers or being called to the bar, I think most people will think that's probably too harsh. Should they face a significant sanction that brings across the seriousness of the conduct? I think most people will agree with that. Within that framework, uh, how the courts decide, I think we have to wait and see. Ms. Haniso. This question is actually akin to what Minister has just responded in relation to recommending for a rehabilitative nature or giving this trainee solicitors a second chance. Whether can we also explore recommending for this trainee lawyers to be conditionally called, continue to have close supervisions by their supervising solicitors or representative from the law society? and serve the community by volunteering for cases through the legal aid bureau or the criminal legal aid schemes until they are deemed satisfied by their um, supervising solicitors. Uh, the, uh, I think the points made are interesting as to whether they need close supervision, I think at age of 23 or 25. 
I don't think you need to have close supervision to know that you ought not to be cheating in an exam because being Singaporeans, they would have gone through exams for the most part of their lives. Um, and one hopes that this wasn't a, a earlier practice. But I think there are some merit in some of the other points about requiring them to do some uh, service to the community. But you know, these are not things that are decided by the government. I mean, we can decide as a matter of policy in future under the law. But for these specific cases, these are matters that are between the Attorney General's chambers to make suggestions, the Law Society, and uh, the, for the courts to decide.